in the marshlands of central Florida. It's the Riley and Kimmy Show. A heavy, ominous stillness falls over the swamp. It sure does, and it's right now in our studios. Because we're right in the middle of that swamp. That's right, it's the Riley and Kimmy Show. I am your host, Patrick Riley. Right next to me is... Kimmy! I got one name! Kimmy! And Kimmy, this is a special episode. Do you know what this episode is? No. It is a Frightful Flashback Friday, Kimmy. That's right. A Frightful Flashback Friday. Now, do you know why it is a Frightful Flashback Friday, Kimmy? Because it's Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. You may only see it once, but that will be enough. Friday the 13th. That's right, Kimmy. It is Friday the 13th. A special episode 435 of the Riley and Kimmy Show. A frightful flashback Friday. That's right. That's what's underway here. We're going to scare you with some things. We're going to frighten you with some things. And they also revolve around comic books. Can you believe that? Wow. A scare with comic books? Hmm. Yes, that's on the way. But if you happen to follow us on social media, you'll know something I posted before 435, and that is monster-related. I posted a comic book ad, because it was a throwback Thursday. I posted a comic book ad from the 1970s. Actually, it ran, I think, a little bit earlier in 1970, maybe late 1969 originally. It ran throughout the 70s, maybe even into the 80s. It was a ad, and they ran a ton of them, like Sea Monkeys, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. That's what used to be in comic books. Mm-hmm. And first of all, did you, were you ever tempted to order something out of a comic book oh heck yeah okay did you ever order something out of a comic book Mm, i think i ordered like a pen radio thing or something oh you did yeah and see i wanted that pen radio now i got the microscope telescope spy kit Mm. as a pen Mm -hmm. that was pretty cool it actually worked okay Okay. for a dollar i was quite happy and satisfied and it was part of me uh cosplaying and living out in this fantasy world i was one of the three investigators which you have no clue what that is all about it was a series of adventure books kids oriented which supposedly is going to be made into a big motion picture but i've heard there's stall outs and things about that hmm. so you have no clue what that is so you got the pen radio mm-hmm. and i wanted that thing i wanted to go on uh, on camping trips with that thing okay. I, I, plus i collected radios radios even at an early age so that was something that would really attract me anything else um well, sure, I wanted those darn sea monkeys, but now, Kimmy, couldn't I'm, have them. I'm going to tell you something. My story wasn't going to be revolving around the sea monkeys, but, you know, the one of the reasons you wanted the sea monkey is because, or sea monkeys, is because you saw this nice, happy family of sea monkeys, right? That's right. And you, you saw the father sea monkey, the, the mother sea monkey, and the, the children sea monkeys all waving at you right there, right? Yep, yep, in, yep. in their uh, sea world home yep. area. And you wanted that in your house with that. Happy go lucky family I sure to keep did. you company, right? Yep. Well, see, I did too out in the middle of the cornfields. I thought that'd be just a great thing. And well, I did order the Sea Monkey family, and it was not, and I'm going to tell you, it wasn't even remotely close <laughs> to what that <laughs> ad was even like. I mean, it was, it wasn't even even near <laughs> to that. That was a rather disappointment. Hmm. That was one of my, you know, see. I didn't learn with the sea monkeys. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Because I would occasionally get something like I hit it out of the park with, like the microscope telescope pen, spy pen. I, I mean, that was pretty cool, you know? And there were some other things like that that were good, like uh, a werewolf mask I got that wasn't too bad either. You know, I was kind of happy, mm-hmm. you know? And so there were certain things that were like, okay, mm-hmm. you know? But then occasionally, like the sea monkey, you would get something that was not exactly as depicted. Now, the ultimate of one of those for me now i'm gonna tell you something you can find sea monkeys now at a certain w store over like in the juvenile section they are selling them and some other places probably do as well mm-hmm. but i think probably the w store is probably the least expensive of all of them that's the same thing it's an official sea monkey product okay mm-hmm. and it makes a great gift for somebody i'm kidding <laughs> okay but if you want to go back in time and say i never had a sea monkey family well you can get one they are out there this other item i'm about to talk about which we posted I am looking for. I want to find it. Mm-hmm. All right. And I'm hoping someday at some collectible show like the uh, Daytona Beach comic book collectible show we're going to, 
toy show, I should also add, uh, that's going to be happening in June. More information right on our website at RileyandKimmy.com. I hope one of those great vendors, one of those fantastic collectors has this. Mm -hmm. And I'm also counting on my friends, you know, possibly, uh, you know, locating this for me. Like Tom, hint, hey, yeah, <laughs> hint, you and your partner, maybe you can find that. Anyhow, what I'm looking for is what I posted on Facebook and on our website was a they, they had a set. They, you could either get one or the other or both. It was the Frankenstein monster or a skeleton that was seven feet tall. Now, the ad read monster size monsters. Mm -hmm. And you know the ad I'm referring to, mm -hmm. correct? Just imagine your friend's shock when they walk into your room and see the monsters reaching out bigger than life. Frankenstein, the original man-made monster. That creation of evil genius that terrorized the world. A giant, seven feet tall. His eyes glow eerily as his hand reaches out as awful and sinister as the wildest nightmare. Yes, Frankenstein is seven feet tall. In authentic colors on durable polyethylene and so lifelike you'll probably find yourself talking to him. Won't you be surprised if he answers? <laughs> now, that sets you up, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Especially when you're a little kid, correct? Oh, yeah. Now, you really want that Frankenstein monster. You know, he's seven feet tall, right? Mm -hmm. And reaches out to you, right? Yeah. Okay, now there's some things you kind of might probably miss there when you're a little kid. And he glows. You, 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 you kind of read that part, right? He's well, like, I do. Yeah, well, you know, you're getting to the, the stickler there. Mm -hmm. But even there, the eyes do anyhow you know glows <laughs> but seven feet tall authentic yes authentic color well i ordered it and it felt like it took 10 years to arrive and mm -hmm. i remember the day the package came and i was i thought it must have been something missing maybe they they were telling me that i had to go to the post office to pick up frankenstein because or they were going to say, hey, the box is coming real soon. Because it was a, a big you know, manila envelope with my name on it. From the place that I sent you know, the, the ad to with my $1. And I opened up the package expecting to see, you know, head to your local post office or, you know, set up a time for the truck to drop off Frankenstein. <laughs> and it was a Friday. School just got out. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to, in a few hours, going to visit a relative in a town about 35 miles away an actual you know town and i'm gonna have i was hoping i was gonna have frankenstein with me and and i was also looking forward to in a few hours well at midnight the local creature feature show would be airing the acre creature feature which i had been multiple creep of the week with i was going to be proud i was going to get you know i had one of those polaroid instamatic cameras i was going to picture me and frankenstein watching acre creature feature that was my goal i and I was going to talk to him. And I, I know I wasn't going to be too surprised when he answered back. Right? <laughs> now, I also should point out here at this time period, it's amazing I ordered this because I truly believed I was living in a haunted house. Now, Kimmy knows that's true. The house I lived in was over 150 years old. Uh, it had been built onto, but it was well over 150 years old. Out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, we're talking nowhere. Flatlands. And I actually thought the thing was haunted. And I had a relative, one of my parents, who let me believe that it was haunted. And they had reasons for that. And we're not going to go down that path on this episode. We're going to keep this part fun of 435. So keep in mind, I actually believe these things are real. And yet, yet I watched the Acre Creature feature. And yet, I wanted a Frankenstein monster. Because I guess I thought he'd be my buddy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hey, you know, it's possible, right? Mm -hmm. He had Igor as a friend. Why couldn't he have Patrick as a friend, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's possible. So anyhow, I open up the package. In the package, there's this this like garbage bag in there it's it's a white garbage bag would be the best way to put it and i pull it out and it's all folded up and it's the same material as a, as a garbage bag and i unfold and i all of a sudden scream and the reason i scream is not out of fright it's out of sadness and horror that i find that frankenstein is nothing more than a garbage bag a white garbage bag with a printed frankenstein on it that's all of this mm-hmm and then these, there's this little package that falls out of the envelope of two dots that you're supposed to put onto the eyes mm -hmm. or, or the eyeballs, and it glows. <laughs> I, I, I was so upset 
And I mean, I just couldn't believe it. And I, I, I took the thing and I hit it because my mom wanted to see what I got. And I was, I don't remember what I said to her. I wouldn't even show her, show it to her. And she said, you know, I had to get ready to go on the road in a little while when my dad got home and I, oh boy. And, but, and she goes, you know, are you taking anything with you? Cause I always took books and things with me. So I took some comic books and I decided to take Frankenstein with me. And I uh, packed up Frankenstein <laughs> in the, in the uh, uh, envelope and, you know, I had an adventure with Frankenstein. I remember that. And I still remember to this day uh, that I, after the shock, you know, actually, uh, he entertained me for a long period of time. <laughs> and, but I didn't have any friends to show him to because I had no friends that ever came over to my house because mm-hmm. I was out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I, I was literally, I had no neighbors, you know, I had no friends. And, you know, I, I wish that had stayed in my collection, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't tell you what happened to it. I don't know. Um, but it's, I'd like to find him. Uh, just to have to this mm-hmm. day, you know, I think it'd be kind of cool. Now, you know, I didn't get the skeleton. I, uh, to me, that was like too frightening. Mm. I, didn't want the, I didn't want that skeleton at all. I, but I wanted that that monster size monster Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. And if you ever see one, let me know. <laughs> I mean, I, I and I hope, as I said, one of the conventions we go to in the near future has this item. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be so cool. Uh, to get. And if you'd like to see what I am talking about, just go right to our website at RileyandKimmy.com. Mm-hmm. And speaking of frightening, to check out something else frightening, Kimmy, go right to our website at RileyandKimmy.com. Real quick here, uh, they posted the upcoming costume changes on some of the DC characters, such as Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, and Batman. Just a quick review here, Kimmy. I showed those to you before sitting down at 435. What do you think of the new costumes? Terrible. All of them? Mm-hmm. Even Flash? Well, Flash... Pretty much look the same. Yeah, I think Flash is, so. you know, yeah, I, I have no issues with Flash. Flash I, is okay. Yeah, Flash is, is fine. Uh, Wonder Woman, not, yeah, I, I'm not that, you know, it's okay. Yeah. It's just, you know, yeah. yeah. And, and <laughs> Batman is just plain ridiculous. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, really, that is just ridiculous. And all it is is a way to market new toys. It's mm-hmm. just a way to, for a little while, and then abandon, you know. And uh, the Superman thing, they actually, that, had been done back a ways with the new 52 when they launched uh, Superman. They kind of, you know, had that look and then abandoned it and had it. Only thing I have to say about the Superman look that they're proposing is it's excellent for certain cosplayers because, boy, you don't have to really invest in much. A t-shirt. Yep. That's about it. Yep. Wow, you're ready to go. Mm-hmm. That's a good cosplay there. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, you know, sometimes people go to like what? Like Megacon. And other conventions, and they wear like their favorite superhero T-shirt, right? Yep. So everybody now that wears a Superman logo, you know, emblem symbol T-shirt, damn, you're doing the new costume. Mm-hmm. Just think about that. Yeah. So if you've been hesitant to cosplay at a convention, just get that Superman T-shirt, and you're ready to go. And a pair of jeans, and you're set. Yeah, you are definitely the Superman to be reckoned with. Mm-hmm. That's the best way to put it, right? Yep. Introducing the new G.I. Joe Adventure Team. Five rugged men with lifelike hair. They're outfitted for action. And they take their orders from this man, the Adventure Team Commander. I've got a total assignment for you. The G.I. Joe Adventure Team. They'll dare anything and risk everything. Collect the new G.I. Joe Adventure Team and add to the action with Adventure Team sets. G.I. Joe, now with Lifelike Hair from Hasbro. Yeah, if you like G.I. Joe like I do, and by the way, I have a Lifelike Hair's uh, G.I. Joe's, quite a few of them. And mm-hmm. I, I collect those, and I have the the previous to that version as well. And yeah, I collect G.I. Joe's, just do. Uh, only the 12-inch ones. Yeah, by the way, make note of that for the Daytona Beach uh, toy and collectible show, uh, comic book show. Yeah, I'm going to be looking for Joe's. That, that's right, put that down. Now, if you love G.I. Joe as much as I do, there's a big G.I. Joe con coming up, Kimmy. Big one, international convention on the way for collectors. Mm-hmm. And we posted the the mayor of the city giving Cobra Commander basically the keys to the city. Mm-hmm. Some fantastic, by the way, cosplay. Now, this event is happening in Springfield, Illinois. One of my old stomping grounds been taken over by Cobra. Hmm. And it's going to be at the Prairie Capital Convention Center on April 9th through the 12th. I would give anything to go to this show, except for one thing. I will not give up Megacon. No. So, I, you know, I am already booked in for Megacon. And I, you know, I kind of needed an excuse to head north to visit friends. This was it. Man, can they move it? Do you think they could move it maybe hmm. maybe a week later or so? Hmm. Man, I, uh, I guess not, right? Yeah. I, I'm kind of hosed there. Anyway, I'm hoping some of my nerd friends 
in central Illinois or, you know, even up in Chicago land can head to this because it'll be a fun event. Yes, there is train service to Springfield from Chicago. So you could go down for Patrick. Mm -hmm. You could look for some things because I know for a fact there will be 12 inch G.I. Joe's there. Mm. I mean, it is a huge event going on. And if you'd like to find out more about this G.I. Joe event, go right to our website at RileyandKimmy.com. And you can find out more about it right there. And hey, you know, you want to help me out just to, you know, just uh Lock on to one of our uh, social media pages. You know, friend us, follow us, like us. We do the same right back with you. Dressing up in costumes, playing city games, hiding out in treetops, shouting out rude names. Well, coming up on, let's see, this Saturday, I can't believe it's not that far off, there's going to be a lot of fun going on in Orange City, Florida. That's right next to Orlando. It's in between Orlando and Daytona. We've talked about the land Florida before. It's actually right in that area. That's, you know, a little metro area. And a good time is going to be happening. Our professor of cosplay alerted us to this event. It's happening in Orange City. That is on March 14th, starting at 630 in the evening. It is a cosplay costume contest open up to all ages. Now they got an age category going mm-hmm. on. they got children's category and they have the adult category uh they have you know the adult category is 18 plus now the one thing is it has to be original costumes and it has to be marvel themed Mm. so you know think about make your own thing costume Mm -hmm. i'd love to see that Mm -hmm. wouldn't you Mm -hmm. now how would you make a thing costume i don't know maybe egg cartons oh wow yeah do you think and 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 then make them orange could be uh you Come on, Kimmy. Get started. You, you got time. You still got time. It's tomorrow night. <laughs> you still got time, right? Uh-huh. Or, you know, reliable here. Certain grocery stores still hand out paper bags. There's nothing like a paper bag, scissors, and crayons to say I'm creative. Yep. Now, our professor of cosplay will be there. Mm-hmm. I believe he is competing. Okay. Now, I'm telling kids, you don't have to worry about this. Those who are 18 and above, look out. Yep. This is Master Yoda coming. Mm-hmm. That's right. This is, this is, he has a name, Professor of Cosplay, for a reason. Mm-hmm. Now, Kimmy and I talked about this. When we show up, now we're, we're, we're going to show up in costume not to compete because we are the worst cosplayers on planet Earth to give everybody an idea that it's okay to cosplay. Mm-hmm. We, we do not compete. Mm-hmm. All right. We, we let those that are really into it compete. We're into it, but we just do it for fun. Yeah. Not to compete right but here's the rules with a professor of cosplay he is like a method actor and being that he is in character the whole time Mm -hmm. and i instructed (laughs) i instructed kimmy i said okay now when we see the professor of cosplay you have to realize you are talking to that marvel character (laughs) and i can't reveal here on this uh on this episode what what Marvel character he's going as. <laughs> but Kimmy's all ready for this, aren't you? Yep. <laughs> and, I'm and, ready. And remember, you have to refer to him as a character. Okay. You know, the professor of cosplay disappears starting at 630. Matter of fact, I, I actually messaged him before sitting down here to 435. And he's already, uh, he's already getting his mind into the character. Okay. He already told me. He said, uh, uh, "Patrick, uh, don't take offense to this, but uh, I'm kind of uh, meditating and I'm I'm getting into uh, into my zone, and uh, I'm getting into the character." He was actually in costume, Kimmy, as he was uh, well uh, typing to me. That's what he that's what he told me. Okay. He said he well, I assume it was costume. He said he was suited up. I assume that's what mm-hmm. he. Meant. I don't think he meant straight jacket. I think okay. He, I think he meant. I think he meant the costume, right? All right. But a lot of uh, a lot of fun is going to happen in this event. There are some great prizes. You like to find out more? Go right to our website at rileyandkimmy.com. We have a link right to this event that's happening in Orange City, Florida. That is Saturday, March fourteenth. Be sure to tell your friends about it. You know, get the whole family. That's one of the things about cosplay. You know, maybe a number of years ago it, it wasn't, but it could have been. It wasn't necessarily a family event. Mm-hmm. And now I guarantee it is. It's fun for the whole family, all ages. I've seen grandparents with their grandchildren cosplaying. This will be a good, you know, a good fun thing. Just keep it Marvel and keep it original. Mm-hmm. You know, something that you're putting together yourself. Mm-hmm. And we are going as Marvel characters. Um, one we've went as before. Mm-hmm. And no, Kimmy is not going as the Invisible Girl. 
You can't do that one, Kimmy. Mm. Told you, you, you that one is not all allowed. Right. That one is not allowed at all. It is a Friday the thirteenth, and being the Friday the thirteenth, one thing is happening because it is Friday the thirteenth. Very superstitious. Yeah, it's a superstitious kind of day, isn't it, Kimmy? Mm -hmm. And we have some friends that actually, I mean, I have one right now in Rockford, Illinois, a uh, former vice president of programming that I was his assistant. The, The guy will not go to work on Friday the 13th. He will not. I used to have to fill in for him every Friday the 13th when I worked at this broadcast company with him. And it was because he really will not go out. Hmm. He won't. I mean, he will not. Now, I don't. Outside of, I know one family member that you have Mm -hmm. or had. um, Was there anybody who was not blood related to you that had that kind of thing going on? Have you ever encountered anybody like that? Uh, Besides him, he's the only one that I've ever known that was to that level. Yeah. But I tell you what, there are so many people like that, and. Mm There is a fun episode we have here right now, especially if you know somebody who's kind of freaking out there. It's Friday the 13th. Mm -hmm. Now, what we have is an episode that is titled Superstition. And what it is is from October 21st, 1949, with the talented Lucille Ball in a radio program called My Favorite Husband, which is actually the show that became... I Love Lucy. That's right, with one exception. In the radio version... Ricky, well, there's no Ricky, it's somebody else, and there's no Dizzy Arness. And mm-hmm. when they said, hey, this show is so hot, it's great, uh, Lucy, will you go to TV? And Lucy said, sure, but Desi's going to be part of it. They said, no, and she said, yes, and they had a spat on it. And Lucy took the show on the road and proved her, to the executives of the network that this would be great with Desi. She was right. And the main writers, the three big writers from the radio series, went to the TV show. And a lot of those original episodes on the TV show that we all laugh and love are from the radio series. They just retooled them for TV and changed some names and things like that. Now, this episode, I'm not familiar ever making it to TV. It is my favorite of the My Favorite Husbands. I love Lucy, but I really enjoy listening to her in this program, this old-time radio show. It's called Superstition, and she is superstitious. Okay. And I thought that would be perfect for today. I mean, she's the type that will knock on wood on, you know, anything. She's not, and, and throw salt and stuff like that. And her husband just, he's been married to her, as he says, for 10 years. And he didn't know she was this way. Mm. And he's trying to get her to, you know, not be that way. Mm-hmm. And all kinds of weird stuff happens. It's hilarious. Just let your mind go. Open your mind to this because it is the theater of the mind. Your big IMAX right there for free. And this is from the golden age of radio, way back when, otherwise known as Old Time Radio or OTR. Here we go back to October 21st, 1949. I guarantee, by the way, this is safe for the entire family. Something to escape if you're at work right now listening or whatever. You can just get away from everything. And if you are having a bad luck day, this is our way of maybe making it a little bit funny for a little while. To forget maybe all those bad things. Here is Superstition with Lucille Ball, my favorite husband, on the Riley and Kimmy Show. It's time for My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball. Hello, everybody. Yes, it's the new gay family series starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning, brought to you by the Jell-O family of desserts. J-E-L-L-O. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O puddings. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O cap. Fioca puddings. Yes, sir. And now Lucille Ball with Richard Denning as Liz and George Cooper. Two people who live together and like it. As we look in on the Coopers tonight, we see a romantic little family scene. Liz and George are having dinner by candlelight. Oh, isn't this romantic, dear? I just love eating by candlelight, don't you? Well, I could stand just a wee bit more light. What for? I haven't found my plate yet. (laughs) Oh, stop. I've been passing food to someone over there. Well, let's turn on the lights and see who it is. Oh, George, you have no soul. Why can't you be sentimental like I am? I am. Honestly, honey, I love eating by candlelight. You do? Yes. You look so radiant. 
I could just sit and gaze at you all night with your face picking up the soft glow of the candlelight. That's the pot roast, George. I'm over here. <laughs> oh, I was just kidding, honey. I really love candlelight. It's wonderful. Now what are you doing? I'm feeling for the gravy. I found it. Oh, what's the use of fighting it? I'll turn the lights on. Oh, there you are. Oh, George. Oh, honey, baby. Now, what are you crying about? We were just having fun. I wanted this to be such a wonderful evening for just the two of us, and now it's all loused up. Oh, no, it isn't, baby. It is, too, and I know why. I know, honey. It's my fault. No, it isn't. The whole thing happened because I walked under a ladder this morning. Now, Liz, that didn't have anything to do with it. It did, too. Honey, don't be silly. The dinner would have been just as bad if you hadn't walked under the ladder. <laughs> what? I, I, I mean, things would have gone wrong just the same. They would not. Liz, I thought we settled this ridiculous business of your believing in superstitions. We've had this discussion a thousand times. I know. Well, didn't I convince you that there's no basis to it? It's silly, sentimental, feminine nonsense. Yes, George. Now, you're never going to think about them again, are you? I promise. My goodness, I never believed in superstitions in my life, and I've never had any bad luck. Knock wood. Oh, I, I'm sorry, George. I just didn't want to break the spell. You said I haven't had any bad luck, and I thought, I hope he never does, and then I knocked on wood to make sure you won't, because if I didn't, you might, see? <laughs> I give up. Well, that was the last time, George. Really, really, I I'm not superstitious. I'm not even plain everyday stitious. <laughs> well, that's better. <clears throat> Give me a goodbye to superstitions, kids, huh? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, you kiss good. Oh, well, thank you. Where'd you ever get those lips? In a surplus store. <laughs> They were part of a bugler's kit. <laughs> Silly. Ah, gee, George, you're so wonderful. I love you even when you're mad at me. And I hope you never change. I hope I never do either. I... Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't help myself. You do believe in it. Well, why take any chances, George? It doesn't hurt. Liz, I'm really disappointed to find such an attitude in an adult, intelligent woman. Who? You. Oh, oh. Well, George, some superstitions are based on good common sense. Name one. Well, uh, if you walk under a ladder, it might fall on you. If a black cat walks in front of you, you might trip over it. Okay, okay. Weak but acceptable. Now, will you explain knocking on wood? Uh. Well. Uh... Ooh, that's a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> I thought so. I know. If you knock on wood and a termite knocks back, you know the wood's no good. <laughs> now, I want you to stop this whole silly business of superstitions and stop right now. George, you knock the salt shaker over. Throw some over your left shoulder. No. Do it quick, George, or you'll have bad luck. Anybody want more coffee? Now, stop it, Liz. Uh, give me some more coffee, please, Kate. Yes, sir. Well, if you don't care about yourself, George, do it for me. I will not, and neither will anyone else around here. Am I the master of this house or not? Yes, master. Oh, well, that's better. Oh, look out, Mr. Cooper. Don't stand up. Oh. Oh. Coffee all over. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Cooper, but you hit my arm. <laughs> well, it isn't your fault, Katie. <laughs> you see, that happened because you didn't throw the salt over your shoulder. You better throw it or it might affect Katie, too. Oh, no, I don't believe in that salt-throwing nonsense. Well, a sensible woman. You don't believe in it, Katie? No, and I've never had any bad luck, Knockwood. Oh. <laughs> Not you, too. Good girl, Katie. Oh, don't misunderstand me, Mrs. Cooper. I'm a wood knocker, but I'm not a salt thrower. <laughs> well, that's your privilege. I happen to be a wood knocker and a salt thrower. George, what's the matter? I'm trying to decide whether to be a maid knocker or a white thrower. <laughs> Will those bring good luck, too? Not to you, it won't. Fine thing. After 11 years of marriage, I suddenly discover I'm living with a witch doctor. Oh. Good morning, 
morning, Katie. Morning, Mrs. Cooper. My, I certainly heard you and Mr. Cooper talking late last night. You didn't hear me talking. That was George. All night long, I got a lecture on how stupid it is to believe in superstitions that have been handed down from the Dark Ages. Did he get rough? I heard a crash. No, no. That was demonstration time. He broke a mirror on the floor and stamped on it just to prove it didn't bring bad luck. My goodness. Is he coming down to breakfast? Yeah, he'll be here in a minute. He's bandaging his foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll get it, Mrs. Cooper. Oh, it's little Joanne Wood from next door. Come in, dear. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Mrs. Cooper. Hello, Joanne. How are you? Fine, thanks. How's your father? Fine, thanks. And your four sisters? Fine, thanks. And your six brothers? Fine, thanks. And your mother? Exhausted, thanks. <laughs> well, good morning, Mr. Cooper. Oh, hello, Joanne. My father asked me to return this umbrella. Oh, thanks. Well, this doesn't look like our umbrella. Uh, l- let me open it and take a look. George, please, not in the house. Oh, Liz, I thought you were going to stop that silliness. But it's bad luck to open an umbrella in the house. She's right, Mr. Cooper. I opened an umbrella in the house once, and a few minutes later, I sprained my ankle. Oh, that was just coincidence. No, it wasn't. I used the umbrella for a parachute when I jumped off the piano. <laughs> you better quit while you're behind, George. No, you two. I'm going to prove to you once and for all that opening an umbrella in the house doesn't bring bad luck. George, don't open it, please. I'm just proving my point. Oh, my foot! Daddy wondered where that hammer was. <laughs> Poor George, it was your good foot, wasn't it? Yes. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> no, no, honest, I think it's awful you hurt both your feet. It just strikes me funny. <laughs> I'm sorry about your foot, Mr. Cooper. Well, thank you, Joanne. At least somebody knows what I'm going through. I remember how my ankle hurt, but it hasn't bothered me in a long time, not wood. Oh, no! Something <laughs> tells me you better leave, Joanne. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Well, that wraps it up, Liz. I can't fight it. Yeah, we got a pretty strong union, haven't we? Look, j- just let me calm down for a minute, will you? Then I've got a lot of work to do. Sure, you relax, George. I'll just sit here and read the paper. <clears throat> Gee, it was cold last night. Listen to this. Min, 48 degrees. Max, 65 degrees. The night before, it was warmer. Min 52, max 71. Hmm. George, why is it Min never gets as hot as Max? (laughs) What'd you say? I didn't say anything. Oh, listen. There's a cricket in the house. Oh, what else can happen? Isn't that wonderful? Oh, there he is in the fireplace. Well, at least we can see him. I'll get him with that newspaper. Oh, no, George, don't hurt him. Liz, let go of the paper. But he's good luck, George. You know, a cricket on the hearth. Hearth smart. Give me that paper. Oh, you murderer. Oh, darn it. You stalled me so long, he's gone. Hooray. Now, where is he? It sounds like he's on this side of the room. No. No, sounds like he's on the other side of the room. No, I can't find him. Oh, shut up! George, be friendly. Ask him nicely. Please, Mr. Cricket, George has work to do. Won't you please be quiet? (laughs) Well, I'll be done. So I. All it needed was a friendly tone, you see? Well, congratulations. Thank you. You go now, right ahead now. Now, do you please. mind if I do some work? No, I won't say a word. Now, let's see. Here's the Mitchell account. Uh, 14 and 18 are 32, and 12 is... 14 and 18 are 32, and 12 is... This is good luck, huh, Liz? Now, George, he's just a little cricket and he's not hurting you. Do your work. How can I do my work while he's sitting there bellowing at me? He's not bellowing. He's singing for you. You call that singing? Well, you rub your hind legs together and see if you can do better. (laughs) 
Oh, there he goes. Where? Out in the hall. I'll get him this time. Oh, run for your life, little Jiminy. Well, where did he go? Do you see him, Liz? Maybe I do, and maybe I don't. <laughs> Elizabeth, tell me. I'm no stool cricket. <laughs> shh, shh. There he is. Where? Under the molding by the bathroom door. Now, how will I get him out? I'll handle this. Okay, you cricket. Come out with your hind legs up. <laughs> now, that was smart. You chased him under the door into the bathroom. No, I'll get him now. Just a minute, George. Don't go in there. He may be taking a bath. <laughs> okay, Liz. Okay, you've made your choice. It's him or me. George, are you trying to tell me that from now on I'll be Mrs. George Cricket? No. No, I'm, I'm just telling you that a man can stand only so much. I'm giving you an ultimatum, Liz. I'm not coming back to this house until that cricket is gone. George, you don't mean I that... do mean. If you want me, I'll be at the club. But, George! Oh. Ah, oh, you and your big, fat hind legs. <laughs> Well, seems like everything happens to the Coopers, and that's not just cricket, is it? But say, here's something swell that can happen to your family. You can start right now treating them to delicious Jell-O puddings. Jell-O chocolate, butterscotch, and vanilla pudding. Boy, take it from me, there's something. Rich and distinctive, smooth as cream, chock full of old-fashioned homemade goodness. Try luscious Jell-O chocolate pudding in this tempting chocolate roll. Just prepare your pudding as directed on the package, reducing the milk to one and three-quarter cups. Cool, spread on a sheet of sponge cake, and roll it up like a jelly roll. It's a grand and glorious dessert treat. Jell-O puddings are so quick and easy to prepare. All you do is add milk, and they take about five minutes to cook. Get all three Jell-O puddings tomorrow, and find out why more women buy Jell-O puddings than any other prepared puddings in the world. J-E-L-L-O Back to the Coopers and the big cricket hunt. Well, it's been two hours since George, the mighty hunter, gave up the chase and returned to his cricket blind. Liz is still hot on the trail. Here, cricket, cricket, cricket. Here, little cricket. Let's go bye-bye. Where are you? Haven't you any idea where he is, Mrs. Cooper? No, he muffled his legs and threw me off the trail. The last I saw of him was in the dining room. What was that crash I heard? Oh, I got mad and threw a plate at him. Why, Mrs. Cooper. Well, I wouldn't mind if he just sat there and cricked at me, but he gave me a great big raspberry. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, it made me so mad I called the exterminator. Good. Let's let the exterminator worry about it. Well, I'm going to give him one more chance to save his life. That is, if he's the type to go for a tin cricket. A tin cricket? Yeah, I had one left over from a Halloween party. See, here it is. Well, you don't think you can fool him with that, do you? No, I might. If this happens to have cricket sex appeal... Oh. <laughs> well, it's worth a try until the exterminator gets here. Now, let's tiptoe into the dining room. He might still be in there. I don't see him. Shh, 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 shh. Ah, there he is. Let's see if I can engage him in conversation. Let's go. Oh, he doesn't answer. I'll try again. <laughs> Say, I think we've got his interest, Katie I'll lead him on <laughs> I wonder what I'm saying to him <laughs> No answer Maybe you were too fresh. <laughs> no, I think he's playing hard to get. I'll really flirt with him. <clears throat> How do you like that? A cricket with rhythm. Oh, that was just a coincidence. Well, I'll try it again. 
Oh, oh, no. I got a hold of the bebop king of the bug world. <laughs> oh, you're making it sound like that. He always gives two chirps. Oh, well, I'll get it. Hey, good afternoon. Did you call the Acme Exterminating Company? I did. I'm Mrs. Cooper. Uh, how do you do? I'm how Mr. Do do? Acme. Well, what are we after? A pack of rats? A bunch of termites? A swarm of ants? It's a cricket. Yes, I heard of it. One cricket. Yes. One little, tiny, solitary cricket. Yes. You had me come all the way out here for one cricket. You didn't come alone, did you? You need every man you've got. This is super cricket. Well, you get stuck for a minimum charge anyway. Now, which room is he in? I'll give him a little DDT, and that will be that. <laughs> you think so, huh? Mm. Well, he's in this room someplace. He's over in that corner. It doesn't matter. I'll just spray this DDT bug bomb. <laughs> now we'll step out of the room until I count ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's the end of the cricket. Cricket! Oh, Cricky! Yeah, I guess he's gone all right. And that will be five dollars. Five dollars? Minimum charge, you know. Well, all right. <laughs> Hark! That's impossible. That cricket is dead. Well, maybe this is his ghost. He's going to haunt you. <laughs> Just a minute. No bug is going to make a fool out of me. I'll give him another dose. Psh. Oh, darn it. That's the last of the DDT. Well, I'll get him some other way. I have a tip for you. Don't waste your time with female impersonations. This kid's a jaded bachelor. <laughs> what are you talking about? My decoy. I was flirting with him before. I was making like a lady cricket. Well, I have a tip for you. A female cricket doesn't make any noise. Good heavens. You mean I was just being one of the boys? <laughs> and I thought I was being so sexy. Yes. Uh, now, do you mind if I apply science? No, go right ahead. I'll use my cunning, my knowledge of their habits. You may not know this, but crickets can't see from behind. This gives me an advantage. You mean you can? Uh, no, no. Oh, there he is now. I'll sneak up from the back with this empty jar. Now I softly but swiftly sneak up and get him like this. Clamp the lid on the jar and there he is. Looks like he's used his cunning, too. He's turned invisible. <laughs> I missed him. Well, he won't get away this time. You're going to use more science? No, science has failed. I hate to do this, but I've got only one choice. I'm going to resort to Plan 4X. A deadly new insecticide? Worse than that. Atomic fission? Worse than that. Good heavens, what are you going to do? I'm going to smash him over the head with a mallet. <laughs> That's pretty primitive, old boy. Yeah, I know, but think of the pleasure I'll get. That cricket is on his deathbed. Here, come on. He ducked under the bookcase in the hall. Help me move it. Look out. Tilt it the other way. I'll handle it. But if you don't tilt it, all the books will fall. Out. Hmm. Now look what you've done. It's all right. I'm insured. There he is on the lamp. I've got you now. Now, wait a minute. It's all right. I'm insured. There he is on that vase. Uh, I know, you're insured. Stand still. I've got him. Where is he? Don't move. He's on your head. Wait a minute. It's all right, I'm insured. Yes, but I'm not. <laughs> oh, now he's gone. Here, there he is on the coffee table. Uh, cheap furniture. <laughs> Look. I have a better plan. Let's dynamite the whole house. Yeah, come on, come on, come out. I dare you. Come out and fight like a man. Look, Mr. Acme, let's forget about plan 4X, shall we? Oh, ratting on me, eh? Well, after all, it's just a cricket. Oh, no, it isn't. It's grown past that. This is bigger than both of us. This is total war. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> There, there now. 
Every stick of furniture is out of the room. Close the door. But I... Close the door! Yes, sir. There are three of us in this room. Only two of us are leaving alive. I hope one isn't a cricket. (laughs) Quiet! (laughs) All right, my friend. What's going on here? Oh, George, am I glad to see you. What are you doing in here with my wife? It's all right, George. He's insured. What? (laughs) He's the exterminator. Uh, What does he exterminate? Furniture? Hello, Mrs. Cooper. Oh, hello, Joanne. What are you doing here? I lost my pet cricket, and Mr. Cooper said I'd find him over here. Your pet cricket? (laughs) What is all like that, he jumped right into her hand. Jumped right into her... (coughs) (laughs) He jumped right into her... He jumped into her... (laughs) You're a bad cricket, Rollo. I'm going to put you to bed without any ice cream. Goodbye, everybody. Well, George, are you ready to admit that I'm right about superstitions? What? Don't you see? When you opened the umbrella, the hammer fell on you. When you broke the mirror, you cut your foot. And you have to admit the cricket and the hearth brought us good luck. Good luck? The house is a shambles. Well, sure, but we've always wanted the room redecorated, and now Mr. Acme's insurance company will pay for it. That's good luck, isn't it? Well, yes, and I hope it stays that way. Is that all you have to say? No, I, I hope it stays that way. Knock wood. Ha <laughs> ha, George! Bob Lamont! Yes, Lucille? Bob. I've always wondered what it would be like to be on one of those daytime serials. You know, those shows where they never finish a sentence. John's other thingamajig and what's it can be beautiful. <laughs> well, this is Radio Lucille. It's no sooner said than done. Uh, yeah. Listen now to Jello's Other Pudding. <laughs> when we left them yesterday, the Jello pudding family was gathered in the living room. The doctor was just breaking some news to them. Uh, I'm the doctor. Uh, Grandma Chocolate, I have something to tell you. It's, it's about your daughter, Butterscotch. You don't mean... Well... It isn't... Uh... Well... Uh... Then it's... Uh... Well... No, oh, I was afraid of that. What has Butterscotch got? That buttery brown sugar flavor. Oh, well, that's good. Oh, I'm so happy. That makes me feel absolutely luscious with deep-down chocolatey goodness. And meanwhile, unbeknownst to Grandma Chocolate and Little Butterscotch, another Jell-O pudding is skipping up the driveway. Oh, I'm vanilla. I'm vanilla. I'm rich and smooth as cream. la di da di da da Oh, Grandma, I just had such an experience. Really, it was such. Ooh, what happened, dearie? Oh, the nicest man picked me off a shelf and took me home with him. No. Yes. What happened? (laughs) Well, the nice man's wife said she always wanted a darling pudding just like me. And she fell in love with me because I cooked to velvety perfection in just about five minutes. Is that all? I mean, is that all? (laughs) No, no. They said wonderful things to me. They said I was nourishing. And they said a swell dessert for the kids. And they said I was delectable. And they said I'm, I'm, I'm crazy. Bill Hatch, get me out of it. Get me away. George, wake up. <clears throat> What's the matter? Listen. What's that? 
Well, it ain't Bing Crosby. Did you wake me up so I could listen to that cat concert? No, I thought you could get rid of him. Because you're so big and so brave and you know how to do everything. Well, I don't know how to get rid of a cat. Oh, maybe I can scare him away. Hmm, a critic. Well, I'm going to throw something at him. Oh, that won't do any good. Well, it might. Let me try. There. My gosh, she stopped. What did you throw at him? Our cat. Good night, George. You have been listening to My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning, and based on characters created by Isabel Scott Rorick. Tonight's program was produced and directed by Jess Oppenheimer, who wrote the script with Madeline Pugh and Bob Carroll, Jr. Original music was composed by Marlon Skiles and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The part of Katie, the maid, was played by Ruth Parrott. Watch for Lucille Ball in the Columbia picture Miss Grant Takes Richmond. And be sure to listen to Lucille Ball and My Favorite Husband again next week, Presented by J E L L O. The big red letters stand for the Jello family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jello family. That's Jello. Yum yum yum. Jello pudding. Yum yum yum. Jello tap. The Oka pudding's yes sir. Syrup for that real maple flavor. For log cabin syrup does your pancakes a favor. A delicate blend of maple and cane syrup at once. You'll want it again and again. You bet you will. What a wonderful breakfast thrill. It's log cabin syrup on your pancakes. Yes, log cabin is the syrup with that delicious Northwoods maple flavor. It's America's most popular quality table syrup. Enjoy it on waffles or pancakes for Sunday night suppers as well as at breakfast. Log cabin syrup on your pancakes. Listen again to Lucille Ball and My Favorite Husband next week. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.